Hello, it's Michael Watts here. It's been a while since I did a video focusing on a specific wood, and I was kind of wondering what you'd like me to look at. Uh, is it possible, um, can we do a Coco Bolo? Yeah, go on then. <laughs> I should stress that everything that I say in this series is a matter of personal taste, and any cautionary advice that I have about any wood should not be seen as a reflection on the vast number of fantastic handmade instruments out there. Recently I've been spending time with this Cocobolo and Sitka Spruce OM by Karen McNally, and it does exhibit several characteristics that would not be a surprise for me to find in a Cocobolo instrument. If you really put me on the spot and asked me to describe the voice of a typical Cocobolo guitar, I'd be using words like crisp, Zingy. Punchy. Cutting, maybe, even. I mean, it certainly gets through the mix. The downside of this information-rich top-end response is that a Cocobolo guitar will very often exaggerate finger squeaks, noise, body rubs, things like that as well. And I'm not even going to attempt to play this instrument for you until I've done my nails properly. Here's Vampire Tom Hiddleston with more popular facts about this interesting wood. Talbagia retusa. For your art project. Hmm. Guy made it for me, no questions asked. He said the wood was so dense that it sinks in water. And I think they make guitars out of it too. Both are true, yeah. This density and hardness really work for the sort of player who enjoys instruments made from more vitreous, vitreous. woods like Brazilian rosewood, wenge, that sort of thing. From the player's point of view, we have to consider the fact that so much of the information that we get about the character of a sound comes from the initial attack. In my experience, guitars with Cocobolo back and sides are particularly sensitive to how the soundboard is created and what it's made of. I remember for a while there was a fad for guitars with Cocobolo on the back and sides and Sinka Redwood soundboards. That's about as glassy as it gets. Hey! Except for maybe like a solid Wenge guitar. Mm -hmm. Cocobolo does have a tendency towards structural instability in guitars. The high oil content of the wood can make glue joins a challenge if it hasn't been seasoned properly. And if I was in the market for a Cocobolo guitar for myself, I'd be far keener on the idea of quarter sawn straight grain back and sides rather than the more exotic looking slab sawn wood I've seen. Lastly, a quick health tip for luthiers that are considering a Cocobolo build. Please look after your respiratory system. This stuff in sawdust form is horrible. Of course, once the wood's in a completed guitar, you're fine, so don't worry about that. <laughs>
If you found this video interesting, educational or even entertaining, please do subscribe to support my channel. Drop me a like and let me know where you think you fit on the spectrum. Do you like it crystal and pure or do you like it rich and warm? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay tuned. Mm -hmm.